What's up everyone, welcome back to Dr. Curzo's YouTube channel. Before we get started, y'all know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe down below, share, 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 leave a comment, questions about medical school, residency interviews down below because we will do a Q&A in the next segment. Now in this segment, I wanted to separate this from medical school because I feel like residency interviews is a big, big important topic that I'm sure a lot of y'all have questions about. Now with regards to my journey in medical school, when I was applying for residency, I prefer to be down south. So I applied for residency pretty much down the southern states of America. And I also applied on the east coast. Some in New York, some in DC, but most of my interviews, most of my programs that I applied for were down south. Reason for that being is because I love the south. I don't like the cold. I want to stay away from the snow. Like we talked about in the previous video, snow is not my thing, so I want to stay away from there. Even though I applied to a few interviews in New York, my preference was to be down south. For those who've done residency or know quite a bit about residency, you know that this can get quite expensive. With regards to the applications, the traveling, and everything in between, it is just costly. So with me, it was safe, safe, safe prior to these residency programs. And because I'm a Caribbean medical student, I knew that I had to apply probably more than a US grad had to. And thankfully, my parents helped me out tremendously with the cost because I knew it was gonna be quite expensive for the application process as well as the traveling. The thing for me that I did different from your traditional medical student was that when I applied for these residency programs, I sent off personalized message to the directors of these programs the residency coordinators of these programs because again i wasn't sure how it was going to play out for me so doing everything in my power to increase my chances of getting these interviews i was all game for i knew it was gonna be extremely time consuming putting these personalized names for each message but i wanted to make sure that i left no stone unturned so i applied to well over 100 programs probably closer to 200 but for me i wanted to get in that first time around so i knew my pockets were going to be bleeding i knew i was going to have no ends after all of that but I didn't care. I needed to get in at all costs. So when I applied for residency, I had a 221 on step one, a 238 on step two CK, and then on step two CS, I passed that the first time around. And for those that don't know what the CS part is, that is the clinical aspect of the board exam. So after applying to all the residency programs, I was confident that I was gonna get my fair share of residency interviews based off of my scores alone, but it was still nerve wracking because you just never know. So what happened was those first batch of residency invites had went out. And I had a couple of friends that went to U.S. medical schools. And with those first batch, they got a few interviews and I hadn't got any. And that very first month or so was nerve wracking because every day, all I could think about was when I was gonna get my first interview, when I was gonna get my first interview. I would go to the residency site and refresh, 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 and nothing would come in. And with that very first batch of residency invites that I was not getting, came with rejections. A few programs that I applied to, off top had denied me. And that right there, added even another level of stress. But after a month or so of not getting any invites and getting a bunch of rejections, I got my very first invite. And that program was located in Louisiana. After I got that first invite is when they started to trickle in. I started to get more and more and more. Man, the level of relief that I had with regards to stress of waiting on that very first interview, waiting on that very first invite was astronomical. I mean, from that point on, I was calm. I was no longer stressed. It was ready to go. It was game time. It was game time. Once I knew I was going to be given a chance to sit across the table from that program director or that residency coordinator or whoever it was, I knew that part was going to be easy because I knew I was going to be able to sell myself. I knew that I was going to get them to like me and I knew I was going to give myself every chance to get into that program. With regards to advice for residency programs, most of them were down south. I had a few of them that were in New York, even though I had no intentions of being there, but I had done a clinical rotation, so I just applied there. I had one in DC. I had a couple of them in Georgia. I had a couple of them in Florida, but most of them were down south. And in total, I had 17 interviews. So my first invite was in Louisiana, but my very first interview was actually in the University of Arizona. And I remember that day like it was yesterday. I had just bought a new suit from Joseph A. Banks. I had a new shirt, new tie, new shoes. I had a briefcase that had nothing in it. Funny thing happened was during that very first interview, when I had my briefcase, all I had was a pen in there. I wanted to look like I had a bunch of stuff in there, but I had nothing. Embarrassingly enough, during the interview, or actually during the process where there was other candidates there, my briefcase opened up. And the only thing that fell out of it was a pen. I had no papers, I had no journal, I had nothing. I looked stupid. I mean, I looked stupid. And I made sure from that point on, if I'm gonna carry that briefcase, I'm gonna make sure I fill that bad boy up. Because if that happened again, I did not want to look like an idiot. So that particular interview at University of Arizona went extremely well outside of the fact that my briefcase opened up and there was nothing in there. But every interview that I did was different. There were some programs where they asked you about yourself and there was other programs where they actually tested you. And when I mean by testing you, they was actually asking questions about medical school. And I was not a big fan of that whatsoever. They would ask you questions about 
how would you treat this particular patient if this patient came to the hospital? They would ask you questions that you saw on your board exam. So it was extremely tough to be able to prepare for that. So for me, I did not like that whatsoever because at that point, I felt like I did everything I needed to do for the board exams. So this interview process should just be about knowing who I was. So going through the interview process, I enjoyed some of them. I disliked some of them just because of that alone. But all in all, I felt like it was a great experience. I was still living in New York when I was flying out for interviews. And because I had 14 programs outside of New York, you can already imagine how expensive we could have got. So what I tried to do is that I tried to bunch all the programs that was in the same state or the same city together and try to knock out all of those interviews out at one time. For example, I had five interviews in Texas, so I tried to knock out those five interviews in a two week span. And fortunately for me, the rotation I was doing in New York was very lenient. They allowed me to be able to travel and knock out these interviews one by one. So I completed most of my interviews. I had three of them in New York, but I canceled two of them because at that point, I had already had so many interviews down south and some on the east coast. And again, like I told you before, I had no intentions of staying in New York and I knew I wanted to get out of there for reasons that I discussed in the previous video. But at that time, I had just applied all over the place because I wasn't sure how many interviews I was gonna get. So all in all, I had 17 invites for which 15 of those I had went on and I had canceled two of those which were in New York. And those 15 programs that I'd interviewed for, I had ranked from one to 15 for a variety of reasons. Location, location, location was number one priority on my list. How I connected with the program director, the residency coordinator, their staff, how the program was set up was also a big factor for me. Another factor for me was fellowships because for me, I wanted to know how successful programs were getting their residents into fellowship programs because at that point I wasn't sure which route I wanted to go I didn't know if it was gonna be internal medicine I didn't know if it was gonna be GI cardiology I didn't know so I wanted to make sure I went to a program that gave me every chance to get into any fellowship program that I had applied for another factor although minor was how the interview process went I was not a big fan of the pop quizzes that the program directors and their staff gave me I wanted to go to a program that was gonna test me was gonna get me ready but a lot of these programs, when they was asking me these questions, did not even ask me nothing about myself. And that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. After taking all of these factors into consideration, I made my list from 1 to 15. And that first seven on my ranking composed of five Texas schools. The other two was University of Arizona, which I loved a lot. And there was one program from Georgia. And how the matching ranking process worked with regards to these residency programs was that each candidate would rank their programs that they interviewed at. And the programs would rank their candidates that they interviewed from 1 to however many they did. So what the system would do was that it would take the rankings of each candidate and it would take the rankings of each program and they would match them. It was a very complicated process, a process I really don't want to explain here, but that's how we found out which program we was going to. So they had this week in March called Match Week. And during this week, on Monday, you would find out if you matched into a program, and then on Friday, you would find out where you matched. So if you found out on Monday that you did not match, you would go through this thing called a scramble. And what a scramble is, is that a program that did not fill their spots will go into this portal with candidates that did not match into whatever programs they ranked. So that particular system took programs that did not fill into their spots and candidates that did not match into programs. So it would be pretty much a second interview process to match candidates with whatever spots that were available. So every program was different with regards to how you found out where you were going on Friday. You had certain schools where they had a ceremony process where each student found out one by one. You had other programs where students found out with their families. And then for my program back then, we found out via email. So for me, I actually flew from New York to DC where one of my good friends actually lived. He attended a US medical school, but we found out the exact same day we were going. I was doing internal medicine and he was doing orthopedics, but I wanted to celebrate in DC instead of New York. I remember what I was doing when I found out. I was sitting on his couch in his apartment with my laptop in my lap. I was convinced. I mean, I was convinced that I was gonna match it to my number one program, which was University of Texas in Houston. The interview process went extremely well. I loved the program director. I loved the staff. It was back home. It just felt like fate. When I opened up that email, I was convinced that I was gonna see UT Houston, and I did not. I mean, damn, that really, really messed up my mood. I matched out my number two program, which was University of Texas Health Science Center, Tyler program, which I was happy about. But at that particular time, I was pissed because I was convinced that I was gonna match at UT Houston. I was convinced that I was coming home. It took me a while to get over that and eventually I did. I just need to remember that not everybody matches into a program and not everybody matches the first time. So that was a blessing in itself. So after matching residency in March, I graduated from medical school in May. And then after that, I moved back to Houston where I enjoyed myself before we started residency mid-June, which was orientation with the start date of July 1st. So that's it for residency interviews. So guys, again, if you like the content I provided, please hit the like button, subscribe down below, share, 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 leave a comment, leave questions. Cause remember, I'm going to do a Q and A segment on medical school questions, on residency interview questions in the next segment. So y'all take care and God bless.